Right, morning and welcome to Last Cast. We're here on our local gravel pit. Uh, we've come low fishing. Um, the producer, Bobble's just got a new underwater water wolf camera which we're going to give a go with various different lows to see how they work. Say hello, Bobble. Hiya. Um, we've just got a selection of lows today. We've got so, a crank bait, we've got a soft bait, a jerk bait, a tail bait and a different tail bait. And we're going to have a look, see what they look like underwater for you, maybe show you how to use them and hopefully we might catch some pike. Right, we're going to make a start, we've got tail bait on in a sort of roach pattern. There's a lot of roach in here, let's see how it goes. Right, with these tail baits, the best retrieve is just a standard retrieve. You can give them a few jerks every now and again, see if you can trigger a strike. But generally, you just reel in slowly. You can speed it up or just slow it down. Give them the odd jerk. And I think we might have a bit of a tango on line. No, we haven't. Just letting it sink a bit, get further than I got on. Right, just reeling steadily. Little jerk. Stop and let it sink a bit and we'll just carry on really. No pipe that time. You can see with this camera on it's pretty difficult to cast but a bit of practice and you can get the hang of it. Right, we haven't had any luck with the tail bait so far, so we're going to swap over to a big jointed crank bait. Let's see if they're having this then. Now with crankbaits they have a lip on the front which is what gives them the action and makes them dive. So generally 
the easiest way to use them is just to straight retrieve as with the tail bait. Every now and again you can give them a little jerk just to make them dive down or dart to the side. That sometimes triggers a strike. Let's see how we get on. Giving it a little pull every couple of turns. Just cast along the bank now, see if there's anything sat there. Right, crankbaits are basically a lipped bait. Um, the lip is what imparts the action into the bait. It makes it wobble as you retrieve and it makes it dive down deep into the water. Generally, the bigger the lip, the deeper it goes. And the angle of the lip as well. All I'm doing now is just a, a slow straight retrieve. Just every now and again, just give it a little jerk just to make it dart or dive a little bit deeper. There's no set rules really. Just watch your lure, see what it does. No pipe. Right, when I'm retrieving this you'll get a look of how the lure actually works underwater. That's if Bobble's camera's working. Right, we'll go swap and try a different lure now, let's see how that looks. Right, we're going to try a jerk bait now. Don't know how this is going to work with the camera because these do dart about a bit. Um, as you can see this hasn't got a lip or anything so you have to put the action into it with the rod but we'll have a look at it when we're fishing it. Right, we've cast it out, we'll let it sink a bit. It's not very deep over here, so that should be enough. Now with a jerk bait, it's called a jerk bait because you jerk it. What we're doing is we're reeling in and just jerking the tip of the rod. A lot of people like to stand facing it straight and jerk the rod down like this. I prefer to do it to the side because I'm only short and my rod's rod six foot six long. Can give it a little jerk. Wait. Another one. With jerk baits you can jerk them fast or you can jerk them slow, it's up to you. Get it in some clear water, in some shallow water, have a play with it, see what it looks like. No hard and fast rules. They give it a pause. Leave it for maybe 10 or even 5 seconds. Just let it sit there and start again.
Great conditions today to show you how these lows work on this gravel pit. Water's crystal clear, it's nice and sunny. Probably not the best weather for catching pike, but if we get one it's a bonus. Right, we've been fishing here for a while, we haven't had a take. So because we're low fishing, we've come light, we can move about. We're going to move around to the deeper water where hopefully there'll be some pike. We did get a bit of duff information that they were all around here, but as you can see, they're not. Or they may be and they're just not hungry. Let's move around there. And we've got one, only a little one. Always worth stopping off at any likely looking spots, just give it a couple of casts on your way around. Right, we're going to up this, on up this now, it's swallowed the hook. Well, it hasn't swallowed the hook, it's just stuck through its top lip and its bottom lip. There we go, it's gone. Right, we've had a fish, it was quite a small fish, but it took a big jerk bait with big trebles on it. The only problem was it was quite deeply hooked, so rather than ragging all its gills and its mouth out, all they did were I've got my cutters here, cut the tips off the barbs, off the hooks, easy to pull out. Um, the barbs come out the other side. Just need a new hook now. Only about 50 pence. It's a small price to pay for a Pike going back unharmed. Right, we've come round to the deeper side at lake now, after we've just had that little jack on this jerk bait. Don't know if it made a difference, but this one's got a rattling. Who knows, some people say it works, some people say it done. I'm going to use this bait first here again, just because it's caught. Then we'll swap over to a, another couple of different ones and show you how they work. So, I'm not going to catch any fish today talking to you, so I'm going to get my bait in the water. One thing I have found, especially when fishing still waters, is rather than casting straight out in front of you, just cast along the bank a couple of times first. There might be a few pikes sat there, and with you casting out there, you might scare them off. So just, just give it a few goes along the bank. It's the biggest feature of a still water after all.
No, that way, let's try it the other way. It's going to be a bit difficult casting with this on, but I'll have a go. Because it's deeper water, I'm just letting it sink a bit deeper. Right, let's bring it in. Not as deep as I thought it was. Should be deep enough now. Bring it back slowly, jerking. Right, we didn't have any luck here on the jerk bait, so I've put a soft plastic on with a weighted jig head. Let's cast it out, see if this is a more of interest to him. It's a bit more of a natural colour, so you never know. Just keep changing your laws. If you don't catch out, change your laws, try a different one. That casts a hell of a lot better than the others. And with these, I just find a steady retrieve because they've got a big paddle tail that flaps about as you retrieve them. Keep your rod down or you can keep your rod up, give it a, a jerk. And it'll come up in the water and then dive back down again. Just mix it up a bit. Right, we've just had one follow here, no take, so been here about five minutes. Let's move along to the next peg, see if there's anything there.
cast it a bit further out now. Let it sink. Let's just hope there's not a big bank of weed there. Right, we haven't had anything on this, so I'll give it a change. Might try a tail bait a bit brighter this time. Right, we'll give it one of these tail baits a, a throw. Gold with an orange tail, not a pink one. Um, this one's also got a, a rattle in it. Who knows if it makes any difference. Makes them harder to make though. Um, these are just a, a, another straight retrieve bait. It's um, just the same as the silver one earlier. Right, I'm just going to have a cup of coffee in a minute, but before I do, I'll just give you a quick rundown on my tackle. Heavyweight rod. This one supposedly casts up to 112 grams, but it'll easily cast up to 200. Um, multiplier reel um, with 80 pound braid on. The reason I use 80 pound is in case I get a bird's nest and my low stops in my day, you don't want it to break and go flying off. Also, if you get on a snag um, with such heavy braid, what you can do is you can wrap your line around your landing at handle, walk backwards and straighten your hooks up so it pulls it off. So rather than snapping your line and losing a low and a trace, all you do is either bend your hook back or put a new hook on. I've got the Waterwolf camera there, which I know very little about, to a solid one strand 100 pound titanium trace. Chances of catching a hundred pound fish are non-existent but the good thing about this with it being a hundred pound in solid titanium is you can catch hundreds of fish on it and it don't kink. Um, quite expensive though, they're about six pound each but being a Yorkshireman I make my own and I can do them for half that so in a future video we'll show you how to make these. My favourite phrase is can't catch a fish with your lure out of the water, so let's get it back in, see if there's any about. So they're not here, or they don't like this lure. What we'll do is, I'll just change it over, put a brighter lure on, have another few casts before we move on. Just 
just changed over to one now that's a, a lot brighter, it's got a bright green tail, UV paint which um, glows under ultraviolet light, apparently Pike can see UV, who knows, and this one's got a glow in the dark eye, so let's see if this does the business. found somewhere that does glow in the dark eyes but they only do them right small they don't do them no, big, big size Right, we've had no more follows or signs of pike here, so let's move to the next peg. Right, right we'll give this one a go. It's um, another type of jerk bait. It's got a, a fin on the back or a vein, whatever you call them, um, just to give it stability so it, it, it glides a lot better. Forgot I had this, um, but we'll give it a go, see if it works. You never know. Right, this is another jerk bait, so there's a couple of ways you can jerk it. You can do short, sharp jerks, which will make it dart from side to side. Or just do long, slow jerks, so it's like it glides from side to side quite slowly. Um, I did tell you earlier on that I always hold my rod to the side, being short. Um, because when doing it like this, it goes in the water. If I'm on a, a bank, sometimes it can knock the end of the rod on the bank. But it is, um, I find it a much better way for striking as well. So when you're striking, if you're using your jerkbait rod like this and down, if a fish takes and you strike, you have to lift your rod up to strike, which leaves a little bit of slack line so the fish can let go and get away but if you're doing it from side to side like this or to the side should I say if you get a strike just lean into it just pull it back that's enough to hook the fish you don't get any slack line and it's all one movement I think we'll change his bait this one's running a bit shallow so let's just see if there's out here if not, we've had a good day. We've had one fish, which ain't too bad. I didn't think we'd have any with the weather. And we've had a nice walk and a bit of fresh air. So let's just have a couple more casts before we pack up. Right, I hope you've enjoyed this short film. Um, with the winter coming, it is pike season, so get yourself out, low fishing, get yourself a rod and a reel, don't have to be an expensive one, or even use one you've got. 
Um, as you saw earlier, don't forget to take all your tools because if we hadn't have had those wire cutters, there was a chance we'd have killed that pike taking the hooks out because they were deep down. Um, need your long forceps, although I use pliers. An unhooking mat's a good one. Doesn't really matter too much if you are in a grassy place because I think it wets grass is just as good as an unhooking mat but if you're on a canal or a still water that's got concrete or tarmac banks it's definitely a must and a small selection of lows and away you go um, we've just been at this gravel bit to pit today um, we've walked round it's taken us an hour or so but if you're out during the day if you're on a river you can walk for miles have a few chucks in each peg you never know what might be in the next peg. So I'm going to leave it there. We're going to pack up and we're going to go home because um, I think my tea's on. But I'll see you next time. Um, and don't forget to subscribe if you liked it. And the next video will be about making these titanium traces. So I'll see you later. And this definitely is the last cast. We had any fish on them ones? That nice. Was. And this one, yeah. We had, um, had two fish on this one. I think I've got some room.